how to make heads or tails of something in three simple steps. Sharon Hornells from here, and our idiom today is centuries old, and it is, of course, make heads or tails of something. The Roman statesman and public speaker Cicero used a similar expression, um, neither head nor feet, back in 100 BC. Long, 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 long time ago. And by the 1600s, the current expression head or tails because almost everything has a, a head or a top, a beginning, or a tail, an end. Even we have a beginning, a head and a tail, and we get reminded of it every single day. So how do we make heads or tails of something? What does it mean? It, of course, means to figure something out, right? To understand it from the beginning to the end, from A to Z. I talk about this almost every day. How do we get from where we are to where we want to be? A to Z. Well, there's three simple steps and we'll talk about those in, well, well, let's talk about those right now. Think of your business and think of your life. Think of everything that we do as human beings. We go through and we face challenges every single day. For a lot of us, it's a challenge just to get out of bed in the morning. I remember back when I was younger, that alarm clock and that snooze button was an amazing invention. But nowadays, we every one of us that own a business are absolutely problem solvers. We are in the business of solving problems, making lives easier for people, providing products and services for people. It's all about figuring things out and solving problems. And not only for our customers, but within our own organizations and for ourselves as well. So how do we do this? How do we do this in three simple steps? I say number one, and we can make decision making and problem solving as complicated as we want or as simple as we want. I am learning it. the older I get, the more simple I want things to be. Because if it's simple, I can break it down and I can share it with someone else. I can get someone else to help me with it. And we always achieve more when we're working with other people than we can on our own. Number one, other people have incredible ideas and talents that we can build upon versus trying to figure everything out ourselves. So what are these three simple steps, you might be wondering? Number one, know and believe with 100% certainty that you can figure it out, that you can make heads or tails of it, that you can figure out how to get from where you are to where you want to be, that you have the ability to find the answers. Nowadays, with the internet and access to information that we all ha must all have at our fingertips, it's, it's almost mind-boggling to think that something will come up that we can't figure out, right? That, and you know, my dad taught me when I was young, there's no such thing as can't. There's, I don't want to, I don't want to put in the effort, I won't do it, it's too hard, I'm scared, there's all kinds of excuses and reasons, but if we want to achieve a certain end, there's always a way to figure it out. So number one is to believe and know that you can figure it out. There have been, there's seven plus billion people on the planet now. There have been billions of people that came before us. Chances are, someone has had a similar situation, if not the exact same situation or problem or challenge or obstacle or idea or thing that you're trying to achieve happened to them before. Guess what? If anyone else has ever done it or ever figured it out or ever solved that problem before, that is absolute proof that you can do it too. So number one, step one, just know and believe that you can figure it out and that you will figure it out and that you wanna figure it out and that you're committed to figuring it out. Step two, Begin with the end in mind. If you don't know where you're going, how are you ever gonna figure it out? So you have to know at least, and not how, but at least the vision and the picture of what it is that you want. What are you trying to achieve? What the heck is Z look like? Where is Z? Where is the end? What is the end result that you want? And then step three, you just break it down into little pieces. You can work yourself backwards with the big milestones and then the reason we do this is we want to figure out where to start. Most of the problems and the, the challenges we personally face that we procrastinate or we make excuses or we find reasons to not figure out and solve for ourselves is because we don't know where to get started. And we don't know where to get started because we think we have to know absolutely every step from A to Z to get us from where we are to where we want to be. So if we begin with the end in mind, knowing that you, we just have to figure out the first step and then the next step, the first step, and when we do the first step and take action on that, the next step will appear. I guarantee it. If you, if you take a step toward what you want and the next step doesn't appear, hit me up in the direct messaging. Heck, call me up on the phone because I guarantee the next step is right in your face and waiting for you to take it. So 
break it down into bite-sized pieces. Not 20 steps or 100 steps or 400 steps from A to Z. Just focus on taking that first step. And then after you take the first step, the next step. What is the next thing I need to do to move me toward my goal? And before you know it, you'll be there. So making heads or tails of something can be as simple as believing that you can, believing that you will and know how to figure it out and can solve problems. Then knowing for sure what, what is it you're trying to solve? Where do you want to go? So often in my life and in corporate America and in my businesses, we discovered that we were solving the wrong problem. We were dealing with symptoms or little minor problems, but until we got down to the root cause of the problem, we were spinning our wheels and wasting our time and energy and resources solving the wrong problem. So I guess part of where do you want to go, what do you want to achieve, is making sure that you're finding solutions and taking actions to solve the root cause of the problem, not just putting Band-Aids on it. Sometimes we got to cut, it's bleeding, we need to put a Band-Aid on it, but we need to remember that once we put the Band-Aid on it, the wound isn't, and the, so the problem that caused the wound in the first place isn't necessarily solved, and we better go back and figure that out if we want to make sure it doesn't come up again or recur in our lives. So that's it. That's how I make heads or tails out of something in three simple steps. I would love to know your experience with this particular idiom. I, uh, my whole life has been be about being a problem solver in a lot of different areas and aspects of my life. So I love the expression in the idiom, make heads or tails of something, because it's as easy as flipping a coin to go ahead and move on and get the results that you want. That's it. Have an awesome day. I'll be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how might you use it in your business right now? Take care.